Good morning, everybody. Thanks for watching. So Mark chapter 9, verse 24 is a scripture that I can really relate to where it says a man saying to Jesus, I am believing, help my unbelief. And those words to me are so telling. But I want to set this story or this account that this man had with Jesus, set it up a little bit. So he had a son, this man in Mark chapter 9, who was possessed by an evil spirit, an evil spirit that would throw his son into convulsions, throw him into fire, water, attempting to destroy him. And Jesus asked how long this was going on for, and the man said, since he was a little boy. So here's a man who had a son who was being tortured day in and day out with an evil spirit. And starting in verse 22 here, after the man explains that this has been going on since his son was a little boy, here's the interaction. And often it casts him into the fire, also and into waters, that it should be destroying him. But if thou art in any way able, this is the man talking to Jesus, help us have compassion on us. Now Jesus said to him, why the if? You are able to believe, all is possible to him who is believing. Straight away crying, the father of the little boy said with tears, I am believing, help my unbelief. And with that statement in that verse, we can see the desperation of the father. And that desperation really didn't come to him until verse 24, or it doesn't speak of it until verse 24. And this is after Jesus said, all is possible to him who is believing. Straight away crying, the father of the little boy said with tears. So the verse says the father is crying with tears. And that is just showing the desperation of a man who had his son that is being tortured every single day by this evil spirit. You can see the desperation and sense it. And that's something I can relate to because I have a son and I have a daughter. And I'm sure many of you have children. And it's the worst thing in the world for a parent to see their children go through this kind of torture and pain. And this at the hands of an evil spirit. So the man had nowhere else to turn at this point. Jesus was the only one there. There was no Buddha, no Muhammad, no religion, no 10,000 branches or sects of Christianity. It was just Jesus. And Jesus said, if you are believing, this is possible for me to heal your son. So there was no reason for the man not to believe. He had to believe. This was his only choice. It would, it would not behoove him or benefit him in any way to not believe because the only chance that his son was going to get healed was if he believed. And that's where he had some belief. But I think these words, I am believing, help my unbelief, the man was admitting that he couldn't muster up enough faith from within him to give to Jesus in order for his son to be healed. He was saying that that belief needs to come from God, that he couldn't do it on his own. So he looked to God to get the very belief to give to Jesus to complete the task of healing his son because he had nowhere else to go. There was no one to the left of him, no one to the right of him, no religion, no being, no system of rules or laws that would save this man's son. Jesus was the only one there. So everything within his will and everything that he wanted would benefit him to believe but he couldn't do it because it doesn't come from him 
he acknowledged that he does believe that there's some belief there that was given to him, but he needs God to give him the rest of the belief in order to get to where he wants to be, which is to heal his son. And he's desperate. He's desperate for that belief. It doesn't say until they start talking about belief how desperate he is, crying with tears. He needs that belief so bad. He wants that belief so bad, but it doesn't come from him. So he's begging and asking, help my unbelief. Give me that belief to heal my son. And that's something that I can relate to in every way. And I think many of us can because we've all, most of us have come through religion, through various different branches of Christianity. Some might have looked towards Buddha or Muhammad or Scientology. Um, you know, name every philosophy and religion. There's thousands of them everywhere. But when we get to the point where we know the truth, when the truth has been revealed to us that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, that through his death, his entombment, and his resurrection, we are complete for salvation, and that God plans every day of our life in every detail. He has written out everything for us beforehand, and we're just walking through that experience right now. So all is of God, and indeed salvation, every bit of it, is of God. So there's nowhere else for us to go when we get to that point, but to understand that it's all of God, and through Jesus Christ and what he did, we are saved. We don't look to the left. We don't look to Buddha or Muhammad or religion or following rules, doing law, or buying into the 10,000 different versions of Christianity that claim that they have the truth. It's only Jesus. We are saved by him through his death, entombment, and resurrection. That's how God saves us. And is our faith like this man always perfect? Do we have all the faith we need? Not always. Not always. We don't always have the faith within us. But like the man, we, we have nowhere else to go. We know all is of God. We know who Christ Jesus is, that he accomplished salvation for us, that we are God's righteousness because of what Christ Jesus did. So there's no looking in any direction. Our only hope is to look to Jesus. So it, it benefits us to believe in Jesus. Everything within my will, your will, is to believe because we don't look anywhere else. There's no other hope. So any non-belief isn't because we don't want to believe. It's because that belief isn't in us. So we understand like this man did that we need to be given that belief so that we can give it to God. We need to be given this belief so that we can give it to Jesus. It doesn't come from within us because everything that would make sense to us, if there's no other way to go, then our will is to give that belief to Jesus, to give that belief to God. But if it's not there, then that just proves that we can't muster it up on our own. We need to be given it. So we look at Romans 11, 35 to 36. It explains in those verses how we cannot give to God anything that he has first not given to us. So, you know, people like to talk about repentance or faith. 
we can't give repentance to God unless he puts it in us first. If he works in us to repent, then people repent. And the same with faith. We can't give faith to God unless he gives that faith to us first to give to him. That's what those verses say in Romans 11, 35 through 36. Who could be his advisor? Who could tell God first? Or who can give to God something that he has not first given to you? And that goes hand in hand with Mark chapter 9, verse 24. And the man knew that. Because there was no other way for him to heal his son. He needed to believe. He wanted to believe. There was no other way. So he, he had to believe. There was no other place, no other person, no other religion to go to. It was just Jesus. He needed that belief. And he knew that it needed to be given to him. Help my unbelief. And that's what I'm trying to relate here. That we have the same cry. Because it's not like we're dabbling now in other religions once we have come to the truth once we've come to the truth and we know who Christ Jesus is and we know what God does through Christ Jesus then there's no going back that's our only hope and it behooves us in every way like it did the man to have faith in that God to have faith in in that Christ Jesus. And if we can't get there with our faith, that goes against our very will. So it just proves that that faith comes from without, comes from outside of us. Help my unbelief because there's no other way there's no other direction to turn. This God is my only hope. So it behooves me in every way to believe. So help my unbelief. Because there's no other way. So I relate deeply to this man in, in Mark 9.24. If we look at Acts chapter 17.25-26... Paul saying here, neither is he, God, attended by human hands, as if requiring anything. He himself gives to all, life, breath, and all. And that's all religion does, is try to attend to God, give him what they think he needs to appease him. Every religion does that. But Paul says, God doesn't need that. He doesn't need to be attended by human hands as if requiring anything. How can God require anything if he himself gives to all life, their very breath, and all? Well, that includes faith. That includes everything that religion attempts to do to attend to God. What Paul is saying here is, God gives everything to everybody so that anything that anybody gives to God was given to them by God first. So help my unbelief. This man in Mark 9, 24 was desperate to save his son. He knew that God needed to give him that belief, that God needed to help his unbelief. Because there is nowhere else for him to turn. Like I said, and I keep repeating that. Because everything within this man needed to believe. He wanted to believe. It's not like he was weighing his options. He was desperate, crying with tears. That's how desperate he was to believe. He needed, wanted to, had to believe. But even in that case, even with us, when we know who God is and what he does and 
his completed work through Christ Jesus. There's nowhere else for us to turn. But it's still, in order to get to that belief, whatever belief we have is from God, and the belief we need to make progress towards God has to be given to us by God. So no matter where we're at in our life, whatever level of belief we have, that's been given to us by God. Romans 12.3 says that God gives a measure of faith to each of us. So the faith we have is God's plan. It's his discretion on what faith he gives to us when. So if we have just a little faith, well, that's where we're meant to be right now. We can't increase in faith unless God gives us that faith. And what a different experience this is than Christianity. Because we can be comfortable in understanding that everything comes from God, that God gives us this faith so that we are exactly where he wants us to be at all times. And even if we don't have that faith, then that means we haven't been given that faith yet. And in God's timing, we know that he will give that to us. But the Christian believes that they have to muster up this faith themselves so if their faith isn't strong enough it's all of them and they need to perform for God if they don't succeed then God's gonna cast them off so their faith needs to be strong enough within themselves it's a faith that they create it's a faith that they present to God as if they created it and if it's not good enough then they're gonna be dead forever or they're gonna be tortured in fire forever so they don't understand. They can't have the desperate plea of the man here in Mark 9, 24, looking to Jesus desperately, looking to God to give him the faith because they don't look to God to help their unbelief. They have to help their own unbelief. They have to muster enough from themselves and present it to God, even though God says you can give nothing to him first, and that he gives you the human life, breath, and all. They ignore that and deny God as being God, and they create and overcome their own unbelief and give it to God, where our desperate plea, I believe, is like the man in Mark 9.24 that we have to believe. We have nowhere else to go. So we know that in order to get the faith we need, whatever faith we have, we look to God to provide that for us. The Christian looks to themselves. And that's a big difference. We can rest in the fact that God has us exactly where he wants us. And if our faith is at a lower level than somebody else's or it's not perfect. We know that in God's timing, he will give us the very faith that we need. And ultimately, as I'm going to explain in my next video, we're saved by the faith of Jesus Christ. That completes our salvation. His faith in going to the cross and dying, being dead, and God resurrecting him from the dead. That's what gives us God's righteousness. The belief that we have is given to us to come to a realization of the fullness of that accomplishment. And that's what I'll talk on a little bit next time. Thanks for watching.